it's Rob! Tony! We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello inmates and welcome back to the Adam Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name, and we are playing on our free-to-play account, I believe we left off playing some ranked so we actually have this druid deck from what i remember yes druid that we have to play in arena um three and two i guess we'll go ahead and continue on i do not think we're gonna get very far with this as it, i don't recall this being a very good deck i mean i just looked at it and it didn't look that pretty i remember going zero and two right we started off zero and two and then we won three in a row so we'll see how far we can get if not that far we'll go ahead and make a new arena deck and start uh, hammering out arena some more uh, we've been kind of slacking we also need to do more ranked but that comes with just playing hearthstone right you always got things to do so one of the things definitely going to keep the two drop in our hand going to dump everything else um there's a couple things i was going to mention one of which the tony's trials tony from what uh he's told me has given up the Tony's Trials, uh, even though I told him a lot of you guys like the Tony's Trials and you enjoy watching it, but he does not believe me, and he is he wants to work on the other channel, uh, playing Bloodborne and things like that, so uh, expect, I think the last Tony's Trials will be the last one, so, well, the last posted one, so rip Tony's Trials. Uh, if you've enjoyed it and you uh, want to see more of it <laughs> yeah he, he 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 i don't know why he doesn't believe me but if you like it i would comment on the last video uh that was tony's trials and say uh hashtag bring tony's trials back for those of you who did enjoy it so we can coin out the flame juggler or the power of the wild because we have the two drop into the three drop into the four drop so there's literally no reason not to coin i like playing the uh, power of the wild and summoning a 3-2 panther because this battle cry can trigger and actually hit a creature um while this panther is just a uh, a vanilla 3-2 okay so this is fine we're gonna go ahead and make this trade Ooh. our curve is looking really nice and then play the uh the flame juggler which is basically a huge toad just instead of having a death rattle death rattle it has a battle cry it's like the same thing and it's not a beast not a beast so we'll go Ooh, corrupted seer how you doing so we'll play the four four go face for two uh so far his curve has been good as well i mean jungle panther will contest the four four he can go ahead and play his four drop flesh eating ghoul two creatures are gonna die and then he's gonna go ahead and make this a four three which is pretty powerful in my opinion for it just being a normal three drop okay Okay, so we played the Shredder because it's better than the Tall Strider, but the reason we attacked the Voidwalker, which is strange, is because let's say he's going to make this 4-3 trade into the 2-3. This is still going to be a 1-3, which means we'd have to attack it with the Shredder first and then hit the Ravaging Ghoul, but the Ravaging, our Fleshing Ghoul can hit the Shredder, right? But because we did it this way, that makes it, wow, we got a fucking horrible 2-drop. Uh, we can use our passive and then hit into the Voidwalker. Uh, so this actually worked out pretty well. Unfortunately, though... This thing is going to be a 6-6 six, six next turn, which is bad. It's very, very bad. Very bad. If we play this, it dies. If we play this, it dies. If we play this, it dies. So is there a difference between the Tall Strider and the Mystic? I don't think so. I don't think this guy's ever going to generate secrets, but there's no reason to play it just yet. What would be a card he would generate secrets from? I don't think I've ever seen a Warlock with secrets. The Tall Strider has one more HP, though, so he can't Dark Bomb it. I think we make this trade, right? It's so weird. We got to play around cards that are um, not from standard mode. So, like, all these cards that we normally never play around, we have to play around now. And it's going to be hard. So, Arena for us will be a little bit difficult. So, he decided to make the trade and not use his passive. Um, okay, this is fun. So we're just gonna play the Sunwalker. It's gonna be a huge card for him to have to get uh, through. Unless he has like a Siphon Soul. Good job. <sighs> Sorry guys. Oh man. Good job, Siphon Soul. How do we not see it coming? All right, so I guess we can go Savage Combatant, kill Alkalite. Is there another better play? Not that I see. 
Man, that sucked. That Siphon Soul was so good. But at least we know now we can play another huge creature and the likelihood of it dying is significantly reduced. Oh, man. I'm so tired, guys. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Normally, when we make our free-to-plays, we're drinking and we're having we're having a blast. But uh, unfortunately, today, no drinks. No drinks in the office today. This is water. And then this is, of course, coffee. And for those of you who are wondering... Um, we'll, we'll finish our turn and then I'll, I'll go into what I was going to say. So we have, uh, na, 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 na. we've got eight mana, so we either play this and do nothing, or we can play two four drops. And I actually like playing this spider first, seeing what kind of action we got going on. Spell damage plus two. I actually like the mountain raptor. And then we'll go with the, uh, the mystic. So, um, what I see, what I was mentioning was if you, if you're wondering, you're like, oh, what are you drinking today? If I happen to have alcoholic beverages, I'll let you know what that beverage is. But if it's not alcohol, I won't say anything. So, um, you can keep that in mind. You'll be like, oh, what alcohol is that? It's like, no, nah, that's just water. <laughs> All right. So, we're, we can do teal damage to uh, two damage to everything, which means if we hit this, that's good. And then we can actually use our passive. Um, hit this. And then we can just play this shit, and it goes ba boom. Everything not a Murloc dies. A hey, Lamau. <laughs> Poor Lamau. This Warlock is still at 30 HP, and he still has tapping capabilities. So, and we'll definitely he'll beat us in value in the long run. That is. For the crusade. For the crusade. No mechs for you. No mechs for you. Well, this is good. I think we just iron bark. And we kill this uh this 3 1 off. I don't like divine shield cards. Hopefully he doesn't have another siphon soul. So next turn we'll go into like Mukla's mounted passive kill 2 1. Jesus Christ. You got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> You picked big game fucking hunter. You gotta be kidding me, man. Like that has to be a joke. Like that is a con like you're contesting my life when you just played this shit. Oh my god. Big game hunter. The second we play our 8-8 in arena. You've got me, man. Next level plays, folks. Next level plays. This guy, give him the fucking win. Just give it to him. Give it to him. He deserves it. Look at him. Look at him go. Look at him make this sick-ass comeback because of one epic that's never seen. Oh, there you go. I wish we had a swipe to punish, but we just don't. Ooh. Can you deal with another big card? Fucking big game hunter it again. Do it again. That's so funny. Oh wow. That's a lot. What can we have? Is there anything we can uh, we have in this deck to kill that? I don't think we have mulch. Probably not. Storm wind champion. So uh, definitely can't stop the lethal there. Good job, man. Sick, nasty plays. Ewok Jesus. You sure are Jesus. <laughs> you deserve that win. That was sick, nasty, my friend. Go ahead. This is why... This is, this is like... His BM wasn't even good. <laughs> Uh, so funny, so funny. All right, let's see what our reward was. I think we built, we did Druid because it was like the best of the worst. But we'll go into Arena again and see if we can uh, we can conjure a nice old uh, a nice deck and uh, beat plebs like the one we just played. Thirty-five, Fen Creeper. Yes, there's nothing more than I wanted. Than was to get another common from Arena. <laughs> Man, they really need to fix Arena rewards. 
All right. Um, can you get this away? Come on. All right. Uh, 150 gold. Or yeah, 150 gold. Mage, paladin, or warrior. Well, we've seen what happens when we pick warrior in arena. We instantaneously lose. Mage is always good, and paladin. So I remember our last OP deck was paladin. So let's actually go mage. Ooh, should we go? Should we go blood of the ancient one? Should should we do it? Should we, should we go for the 30 <laughs> 30? Nah, we can't do that. We'll go for the uh, we'll go for the shade. The shade's good. Uh, I think we go sorcerer's apprentice. Ooh, this one's hard. So like pit fighter is just a really solid five drop, and snow checker is a great great two drop. Uh, I think we go with the pit fighter though, just because uh, five drops are always pretty hard to come by. Well, good five drops. Fen creeper is great. Yeti is very solid. Oh, Elven Archer value. I'm sorry, guys. We can't go with it. Not when we have Faceless Hunter, uh, Faceless Summoner. If we had almost, like, uh, if it had, I'm trying to think of what we would have picked it over. Um, I don't know, but we got to pick the Faceless Summoner, guys. Elven Archer is fantastic, but not, not when we got Faceless Summoner. That card is too good. All right, so Mirror Image, Huge Toad, Fairy Dragon. So Huge Toad, I think I'm going to take over the Fairy Dragon because the reason be the reason being is, first of all, there's not a whole lot of spells um, that Arena's going to have uh, that we're going to be trying to play around, but Huge Toad to Death Rattle can actually make a significant impact in the game. It counts as a dragon, though. Oh, another Faceless Summoner for sure. This is looking, this is a very sizable, this is, this is looking pretty solid. Uh, wobbling Runs, Vaporize, or Arcanist? I think we're going to go with the Wobbling Runs, as bad as that card is, we got to go for it. Uh, no draw, Dragon's Breath is actually pretty solid. We'll go for the uh, Unstable Portal. Four drops, I think we go Frostwolf, right? I mean, we already have two good five drops, this is good. The unstable ghoul though early game is like a solid clear just in case we don't get what we need to succeed. The polluted hoarders solid four drop allows us to draw, but it only has two HP, which dies to a one or two drop. I think we could go with the warlord here. Wow, this one's hard. We're gonna go with the four drop. I think uh, solid four drops good. Haunted creeper is a fantastic two drop. Wow, this is hard. So Iron Beak, since its nerf, is fucking horrible. Iron Forge Rifleman is just like trash. And then the Warlord is a really good 5-drop, but we're getting bogged down by the 5-drops. We're halfway into our deck, and uh, we have no 1-drops, we have minimal 2-drops, we have no 3-drops, and we have no 7+. plus. I, I don't think we could go with another Frost. I think we have to go with the Rifleman. Yeah. <sighs> Shredder or Spider Tank? I think we go Shredder. This is looking very good, guys. Forgotten Torch, hell yeah. Put another Fireball in our deck. Twilight Drake, hell yeah. Mmm, Commander's really good. Explosive Sheep, that's for sure. That's an easy field clear. Spell Slinger, Ass Pirate, or Mugai Shan Pai Warden. Um, our four drops are pretty covered. Our three drops could use a little uh, help. Spell Slinger could always give us something good. A Leopard Gnome is... A one drop that does damage. Iron Beak's a solid silence. All right, we got this guy in 8-8. Eight, eight. You could go a Leper, right? Just to put a 1-1 one, one down, but it just dies. This is where I'd want, like, Crypt's little counter, right? To tell us, like, what's bad and what's good. Because now I, I, I'm not really sure. Like, looking at our... Our cards, I mean, obviously having a one drop would be nice, but if we draw that any time besides turn one or two, it's just bad. Iron Beak can be good situationally, but for three mana, for a two one, you gotta be fucking kidding me, mate. And then the Devil Sword is fantastic, but the thing is, we already have a ton of pretty heavy, heavy end cards. But I mean, we'll go with the 8 8 just because we don't have a lot of big game stuff. We're gonna go with the two drop here. Uh, Worgen's pretty good, especially in the mage. Acidic's good. This guy is really good. The horror. Uh, but so is the Acidic Swampoos. But we already have a really good amount of two drops. We already have, like, our curve right now is fantastic. Like, this is just phenomenal. I guess we go with the horror. We need a flame strike. That's what we need. We're gonna go with the Twisted Worgen. Give me a flame strike. That's not a flame strike. Definitely no. Tournament Medic is not bad. 
It's not good though. Silent Night is pretty fucking horrible too. No good turn three though. We have a lot of good turn four shit. I don't think we picked Tournament Medic because of that. I mean, it's a good heal though. I guess we could go for the heal. Fuck me, mate. We, we're not getting another horror. There's no way. I think we go Twisted Worgen again. Yeah, this this is just this is too much. We go Twisted Worgen. Fuck. We have no Flame Strikes. We have no Frost Bolts. <laughs> we'll go Twilight Drake for sure. All right. Well, this is a pretty solid deck. Besides not having Flame Strike, like that is so bad. Like at least just one flame strike, you know. I can deal with not. I can deal with like no two flame strikes. Like that's just that's just my ass. But like we we can you know one flame strike give or take. You know just a little, little flame strike here and there. But no flame strike. <clears throat> We've received numerous comments. Uh, not that I'm ignoring you guys, but I will respond to you after this uh, this free to play episode. All right, let's see if we can curve out. All right, we got two drop. So we're gonna put back the five and the five, and let's draw into another two, or a three, or a four. So we drew into a four and a four. So this would be really, really good if we had coin. We don't have coin, but we, so it's two on two, two on three, four on four, four on five. Looks good to me. Arena is all about curving out and then synergies where you can, but mostly it's just on curve, guys. And then, like, if you've got some huge field clear, like, let's say we curve out really well and we're playing against, like, another mage, right? And he decides, yo, I'm going to flame strike. It doesn't really matter how well you curve out. Not a, cre not a lot of creatures live past flame strike. So if we go huge toad, haunted creeper, or apprentice, that is the question. I think we go creeper for value. Cuz let's say he plays like a like a 2-3, we just play huge toad. A secret, eh? All right. Let's see what that is. Freezing trap. Bear trap. All right. So I think we go sorcerer's apprentice because if huge toad uh, the death rattle is just going to go face. The sorcerer's apprentice though. Well, yeah, what if he kills this with like a spell? Huge Toad might be a little safer because if the the his poopy lands on the bear, it'll make it a three two, which means we can play Apprentice Ping and Swing with our spider if he decides he wants to kill it with like an Eagle Horn, Eagle Horn bow or like a spell. <sighs> Spawn of Nazoth. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So we know this trade's going. Does his poopy hit it? His poopy hit it. All right, so we actually could go Worgen ping, or we could go Sorcerer's Apprentice ping, or we could just hit it and then summon like Twilight Drake or like a Yeti, and then we could have a board full of one ones. It's like how bad do we want this spider to live, right? If we play this, it's going to be a four five, the same as the Yeti. The Yeti's always going to be a four five, but this is only good sometimes. So I think we go ahead and attack this, and we're going to play the Twilight Drake. I'd rather summon a, a larger creature than play a smaller creature and don't develop the board as quickly. Oh my god. Ever since I've been doing the working out and the elliptical, like I've been just like, it doesn't matter how much sleep I get. Like I wake up in the morning and it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> don't hit the, never mind. <laughs> Well, at least that was his entire turn, right? So if we would have played the smaller minions, they both would have died. So we, of course, we play the Yeti. There's no reason to play anything else. And then we follow up with the Faceless Summoner. So this is what this deck is. It's basically just curving out really, really nicely, playing very powerful minions for those mana slotted for each. And uh, we'll be able to get, I think, pretty far with this deck. It looks like it could at least hit, I want to say, five or six wins. Without Fireballs and Flame Strike, it's hard to go any farther because there will be mages with Flame Strike. At higher than seven wins so it's basically like playing against people with just you know just better CC cards 
Not that our cards aren't good, but you know, creatures will only take you so far. You need a good mix of creatures and decent spells, especially as a mage. Alright, so we know this is going to die, so do we play this guy first, or we go and play the summoner and then just play this guy on turn 7? I think we play this guy on turn 7, because the faceless is going to summon an extra dude, right? So we actually know this little 1-1 one is going to die, but if we swing this into here, then the the uh, the Twilight Drake's going to die no matter what. So we're definitely going to swing this in first. This is going to hit everything for 1, then we can go ahead and summon the faceless, uh, or we could go ahead and summon the 2-2s um, the two and then f keep this alive. But I really like saving this spell, this uh, this dragon's breath, because I'll unleash the hounds. This is very prone to that. So we'll just go summoner, see what happens, and then we'll kill off this. I could use the spell face, guys, but we save spells for creatures. We never go face unless we're going to be winning in the, f the turn that we use it or the following turn. Like we're setting up for some sort of lethal or something like that. That guy's pretty annoying, but because we're a mage and we're good, we just go like this. <laughs> skill and then we can actually well we could swing with our 5-5 five five and then develop uh, the f this guy but then we're really weak to unleash the hounds in like a leoc or something or we could just use dragon's breath and it does the same thing no creatures take damage we've actually lost nothing and we're putting them in uh, lethal range next turn well one off lethal but he doesn't know that The only reason we're playing this particular way is because we're going against a hunter, and uh, hunters do not have great ways to deal with uh, field uh, field full of minions. If we we're playing against a mage, we would uh, play this a little slightly different. So, because he put this in the way, we cannot get past it. We definitely want to it fit in a ping this turn. So, um... I mean, we could, yeah, we'll just play this dude. We know we're fitting in a ping. The ping can go ahead and hit the 2-1, or this guy. Um, we can swing this into here, but it dies. We swing in this into here, the lower creature. Uh, we can keep our 2-1 alive, but again, we could play around on leash. But I don't think it's worth playing around on win. We actually can put more damage face, but we have lethal no matter what the following turn. So it's like, do we give up the 2-1, or do we give the 5-5, five five, put uh, one damage on it, and then swing face for two? He's still at 11, so I think we can just keep the 2-1 alive here. We're in a pretty good position. So if we were playing against a mage right there, I would have killed off my 2-1. Because a flame strike would be able to kill the 5-4 now. But before he would have to ping it, right? So I'm not gonna BM like some some other people who like to <laughs> rifleman their self in the face <laughs> for one damage. <sighs> so we'll play one more and then we'll call it here. Hopefully we can get the 2-0. The 2-0 started with the uh, FTP account. Alright, so we're going against another mage. Hoodie shorts. Dragon's Breath will most likely be going back. Huge Toad is good. I guess one Twilight. Well, so turn two is like just play Huge Toad and then we coin Twilight, play Twilight. But then they're going to be like four threes and four, like four fives. <sighs> I don't know. I think we can put one back, right? Well, they're only going to be good early on in the game. So we have two drop, coin, four, coin. Yeah, well, fuck it. We'll keep them. This is fine. Yeah, so we have two drop, coin on to four, play four, and then play into five. Can't really ask for anything better than that. Oh, into the six. <laughs> this deck right now, guys. These draws. Too bad we can't draw like this on our main account. I'm pretty sure my main account is bugged. Like, it is straight up fucking bugged. Like, they're just like, they, they just turn the RNG counter really far down. They're like, we need to fuck with this kid all day or day. Does he have a secret? Oh, wow. That's pretty impressive. Okay, well, we know we're attacking this. Effigy? Duplicate. That's a value card. So we know that card is a... Um, oh, it's a 4-3. So we know he's probably going to play it again next turn. If we coin Twilight, 
<sighs> we have... It's basically the same thing as the water elemental, but this is only going to get value while we have cards in our hand, and I can't guarantee that. Eh, 4-6. Miscounted. We'll play another one next turn. Hmm. Makes me think it's a vaporize. There's only one way. Well, should we play around vaporize? We could go like haunted creeper ping. <laughs> I don't think we play around vaporize. Watch it be vaporize. Ah, ice barrier. Okay. Did you know Azur Drake used to say he used to be a four drop one one for every card in your hand get plus one plus one? Did you guys know that? So he would have he would be a six six right now. That's fucking retorted. That's not as good as a four mana seven seven. But hey, oh man, sorry guys. Who am I to tell Blizzard how to make their cards? I don't think I would get along with the Blizzard team very well. Like they would introduce an idea, and I would be like, "Are you guys?" Fucking retarded. <laughs> like, why would you ever put a four mana seven seven in the game? Like, how is that fun and interactive? What what in your right mind did you go? Yep, that's exactly what Shaman needs. Four drop seven seven. Write that shit down. We're going with it. It's like, when does that ever like why? Like you could have come up with so many uh, because that game was fast, we'll play another one. And it's like so many better ideas. So it's like, alright. What do we give Zoo Warlock? You know what? I'm thinking something that combos well with Doom Guard. We're just not we're not satisfied where Zoo stands right now. Zoo needs to be a little bit more cancery. Like a little just like a sprinkle more of cancer. So it's just like how do we make this? You know what? Let's make it so when we discard a card, give him give him a 3-3 three, three on the board. Does that seem fair? Fuck yeah, it does. A little scratch that in the memo real quick. We're gonna keep the uh the Twilight. Would ah, oh, no, nah, nah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because the thing is, if we draw into Twilight later on in the game, it's bad. But if we play it now, I ah, fuck it. We're greedy, right? We can draw into a two drop, easy. Pff, there it is, easy. All right. But seriously though, there's there's quite a few things that just like, and you don't even like. There's there there's a whole scene behind it, but. It, when one person falls in love with a card and that person happens to be your boss It's kind of hard to tell your boss that his ideas suck So this is why you have like two different teams just like almost a lot of other card games do they have like the design team That you know or the, the creation team they create the cards and that's all they do they create cards and They're not worried about balancing that's not their job They create fun cards like oh I think this would be a good idea and all those guys they brew up creative ideas And then from there you have the balance team who looks at okay How is ranked play right now? How is arena right now? What cards should we be looking to add into the game then these guys pull up the cards that were created by the creative team and go all right well this we like this card but it needs to be balanced so we like the idea but it needs to be toned down and then you have your whole you know checks and balances which is the entire play testing part of Hearthstone where they you know they continuously play test decks and look at the analytics to see okay what deck has you know huge win percentage over other decks and why is that true and I'm sure they do this but obviously not very fucking well <laughs> it's like I don't no guys it's it's so silly to me so I think we just hit this and then we're gonna smack into this but it's there, there's just one team and they're trying to do it all and it's just like if you look at overwatches uh, overwatches development team or like WoW's development team they're constantly communicating with their community they're constantly updating the game like they have a uh, uh, some of their techs there's that what is it called? It's like it's the six drop six six whenever your health is below 15 make it a nine nine Instead of saying I think humanoid on it, it It's misspelled and it's been like that since the card came out over a year ago Like there's a misspelling on the card like you can't just go in there and fix a misspelling like how much money does Hearthstone make guys and I'm sorry this is a huge rant and I am so sorry but it's just for some reason, I don't know what tilted me on it, but man, it's just one of those things. Where it's like, when you're making millions, guys, spell check. Real easy. Re Microsoft Word will do you wonders. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, 
Wow, three spectators. You guys are making me nervous. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to Magic Turtle, Go Meegs, and Vanish. Thank you for spectating, and uh, I'm sure you guys watch the videos as well, so glad to have you. Alright, so how do we deal with this 6-6 with Death Rattle? I think we ignore it. Whatever we play is obviously going to die. Unfortunately. There's no true way to kill it unless we want to Dragon's Breath. We're not Dragon's Breathing. We could play Piloted Shredder. Which I think is the a good move here. Because this isn't... Like, if it does die, which it will... Do we attack the 2-2 two -two Harvest Golem? I think we do. I think we gotta go for the value here. That's not a lot of value, but it's tr attempting to deal with his board. Oh, we also didn't get a Polymorph. No, we did not. So I'm assuming this turn he's gonna make some, he's gonna make a trade with the 6-6. Six, six. It's gonna go down to two HP. From there, if we need be, we can Dragon's Breath. Maybe a Flame Tongue Totem. He'll be able to make a trade into the higher up with the Shredder and maybe an Abusive Sergeant. Okay, so the Defender of Argus allows him to make the trade there. And then he's going to trade into the Shredder, which will be really... Oh, baby. He goes face. He knows he doesn't have to. This is a little bit better for me, though. Yeah, so we'll actually be able to attack into this. See what happens. Ooh, hit him with the nine. All right, so we know we're Dragon's Breathing. And then we can't follow up with anything else. Rip. We can ping this. Next turn, ping and Rifleman. If we ping face, what do we do? We're, if we ping that and we commit the 3-1 into it, we lost one damage. Oh gosh, another spectator. You guys are freaking me out, man. <laughs> Stop doing this to me. What would we want to play next turn? If we commit to the Rifleman, then we're bound to play a 4-mana spell anyway. But it, what if we ping? Yeah, we need to play. Yeah, we go face. This, this Worgen's going to hit this uh, Abusive Sergeant. I don't think you have a way to give this Abusive Sergeant. Not Abusive Sergeant, but Defender of Argus plus one HP. If you have another Defender of Argus, that's pretty good. That played around me. That's Sapir. Oh, gosh. Manoyotron. Definitely annoying. Berserker. These aren't high level. This is where, like, Flame Strike would come in, right? So we just, like, Flame Strike and fuck them up. But rip. No Flame Strikey in the Chatteronis. All right. So we could ping Rifleman. No. Definitely not. So I guess we... Wow. Not a whole lot, guys. Not a whole lot. Ugh. <laughs> rifle minning does nothing. We would rifle min a Noyotron and then swing with our 3 1. That just feels horrible. We could Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is pretty good. And then we end our turn. So now we just pray he doesn't have Lightning Storm. If he has Lightning Storm, we give him that GG. It's interesting he played all of his low-cost creatures on turn 6, though, into our turn 7, like he knew we didn't have Flame Strike. He's a... He's a god. He knows. Mr. Inviscus Sum. There's, there's a lot of cards that I don't mind not seeing anymore. A Noyotron... Sledge Belcher, <laughs> Mad Scientist, Dr. Boom. Like, there's so many cards that I'm just so, like, I am, thank God they are not in the, like, in standard format. Like, it just, it makes the game better. But unfortunately, there's other cards that get released, like Yogg and things like that, that don't need to be in the game, but they are. So, he took the trade. That's fine. And the Reckless Rocketeer swinging into the Azur Drake, or will he go face? Okay. Him going face is good for us, because we can actually Rifleman and ping that. Ooh, Unstable Fortal. Unstable Fortal. So, we know we're pinging this. This is five mana, which means we don't have room for anything else. So, Unstable Portal is fine. Wow, look at that. So, we'll deal with this real quick. And I think we can attack into this to knock off the Divine Shield. I don't mind taking the one damage. Ancient of Lore is really good. Unstable Portal is another one. <laughs> Card's so broken. Like, you Unstable Portal into, like, a Tyrion. It's just like, what? <laughs> Why is that allowed? <laughs> 
He should make the two. Oh, will he cast it? Oh, wow, he cast another spell. He he values that Anoyotron very heavily. There's the Dark Iron to buff it to go face. Okay. So we're getting kind of kind of low low. I think we hold on to this Ancient of Lore for now. I think we can just go ahead and play these dudes. And we'll still hold on to our 3-1. We're not low enough to where we're scared of dying, but we're getting to the point where heal over card draw may be a better thing. And the reason I'm not trading into the Anoyotron is because I value the 3-1 higher than the damage that the Anoyotron's putting out, only because we have Ancient of Lore in our hand. I value the 5 HP very heavily because we're playing arena, so I don't expect burst, right? Like, I look at the field and I go like, all right, maybe he has like plus two because of like an abusive sergeant or, oh God, a Norsey Kraken. Well, how you doing? All right. Well, he put me on the burners now. All right. So probably using the Ancient of Lore for the heal. Flame strike, guys. Flame strike. <laughs> Where is the flame strike? So we could go Spell Slinger to see what we get. So we can, yeah. I'm scared it might give him something good though, but we don't have the option. So Spell Slinger. Ooh, Lightning Bolt. That's pretty good. So we definitely know we have to freeze him. Or we could go off and just kill this. I think that's the plan. So this we know is swinging into here. Oh no, now we can't kill it. I'm retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was dumb. Why did I do that? Because I had planned to lightning bolt this, or swing into this and ping this, but I just ignored this. Well, we can still heal ourselves. And we can still ping and lightning bolt, so. We can leave him with four damage on the board. I like that a little bit more. Okay. I didn't want to kill off my water, water elemental just to freeze him for one turn. So I'm going to make the assumption that he doesn't have five damage burst from face. Unless he got like bloodlust from the ancient of lore, the spell slinger. We don't know what he got from spell slinger, which is one scary thing, right? What if we would have got flame strike from spell slinger? Whew, daddy. That would have been awesome. He could have gotten flame strike. That'd be really bad. That'd be a hundred percent bad. Yeah, what I wanted to do was Yeti into there and lightning bolt, and then we could have uh, swung ping. That can get pinged. Not really scared. Mass dispelled. That just draws him a card you should have drew before you played the Psychotron in case you drew his damage. So now I'm guessing you just go face because you're committed. You are committed to the face. Yes, you are. So this goes here. <clears throat> now to how do we want to pan out these attacks is the question. I think we need to keep the... Do we play? The question is, do we play around Lightning Storm or not? And I don't think we have the time to play around Lightning Storm. So this is gonna go here. This is gonna go here. Uh, this is gonna go here. We're gonna go like this. This is gonna freeze him just in case he draws a weapon. Why is he not frozen? Oh, it's dispelled. <laughs> Watch him win because he rips a weapon off the top because he dispelled us and we can't kill it. How much damage do we have? We have 7, 10, 13, 18, 21, 22 with our ping. Oh, man. So we need one damage to win this game. We need a one damage to win. Oh gosh, the Oasis Snapjaw. What a creature. Man, that's one big turtle. That's a spiky turtle. Look at that shell. No one's fucking with that shell. He looks like an old grandpa. Faceless Suminur. Well, this only has one HP. This also only has one HP. So, I think this can go into there. And then we'll play... Well, how many creatures do we have down? Five, so we can play this freely. Ooh, that's really good. Alright, so we win next turn. Alright, do you have five damage? 
That is the question. King's Mukla, though. That's what it's called? King's Mukla? Or King Mukla. King's Mukla. <laughs> like, there's multiple kings. Ooh, Earth Elemental. That's a good card in Arena. Demolisher. That's also a good card. I don't think it's going to be enough to hold back our forces, though. We've got quite the army. So, this goes here. Um, the one that can be healed up. So, this goes here. And then this goes here. And this goes here. Sweet. So, we're 3-0 with this deck. Really good start, guys. Really good start. We was looking a little frisky dingo there. But, if you noticed, our lore uh, healed us for 5. And we sat at 5 HP the entire game. So, if we wouldn't have got lore from Unstable Portal, we would have lost that game. 100%. So, thank you, Lore. Thank you, Unstable Portal. Uh, shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks for playing. <laughs> so, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Let's open our one pack that we got from our previous day arena run. Let's see. Let's open up uh, Let's open up the Yogg Arenas here. Well, that's a golden uh, frost color. That's not a Yogg. That's not a Yogg. That's not a Yogg. That's another rare. Still not a Yogg. There's Yogg tentacle things, but that's not the full Yogg. I wanted Yogg because I want to build Token Druid on this account because I really want to get good at that deck. Um, but the Golden Rare should be able to disenchant for a lot. We're never going to play that guy. So we're at 55, go 55 dust. I think we're going to get to Yogg really soon. <laughs> Kappa. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Of course, I'm Warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is.